Hello, everyone. GM, GM, welcome to another episode of the Solana Changelog. I'm Nick from the Solana Foundation DevRel team. And today I've got Jonas with me. How are you doing, Jonas? GM, Nick. Yeah, super happy to be here. I'm actually currently at Mountain Dow in Greece on Crete on island an island. Dao? Island Dow. Oh, <laughs> of course. We are on an island here. It's sunny. It's, an uh, it's beautiful. There's tons of builders here, a um, bunch of gyros. And yeah, it's really nice. So if anyone gyros. still wants to come, yeah, gyros, so nice. It's going to be here the uh, whole month. I'm also going to be here. We're going to record some videos. If you want to shot, shoot a what are you building video, for example, you can come over. Also, the okay. Berlin Blockchain Week is at the moment, and they had a 24-hour hackathon yesterday, which looked amazing. Oh, nice. They even had tents uh, at the hackathon. So some people slept in tents <laughs> during the hackathon. <laughs> really Classic cool. devs. That's really cool. I didn't know there was a, a, a hackathon going on. I, I, hope, I hope I get the chance to see some of the projects that come out of it. But uh, yeah, let's, let's get to the changelog. What, what commits did you see this week, Jonas? Yeah, so there's some new ZK stuff coming to Solana, actually, which I think is super uh, exciting. Like, you might know that we have these confidential transfers in the new token extension program, and it's using ZK, and there's more functionality coming. So there's, for example, this um, Algam hashes here that you can now use to, for example, validate uh, that a pub key is actually valid, and also that the owner has the private key for it. And you can also validate that... Um, <clears throat> Two messages were um, signed by the same key. And yeah, this is using this um, Algam um, encryption, which is like similar to RSA. And now you can use it on Solana, I guess, yeah, soon. that's cool. Soon, TM. <laughs> yeah. yeah, all the ZK stuff. Sam Kim's awesome. Cryptographer extraordinaire. And uh, yeah. And then some of the other stuff that's going on in the commits and the change log is officially Borsch 0 0.9 has been deprecated. It's been deprecated for a while, but it's actually been finally removed. Um, so it's a breaking change, just so everyone knows. Uh, 0 0.1, or sorry, yeah, 0 0.10 is now the uh, current version, breaking change. Everyone, you're now informed. <laughs> yeah, if you see any problems with it, let us know. Um, yeah, hopefully there's no more problems, but I remember last time Borch was touched, it was really bad. So. And then there's Anchor. The Anchor CI was actually updated. So for those of you who don't know, there's actually a CI job within the Agave repo that actually checks to make sure that Anchor will still work since Anchor is so widely used. But now with Anchor 0 0.30 having been out for a while, John Chinkwe, the man, the extraordinaire, has updated the CI to actually include Anchor 0 .3, uh, 0 0.30. And actually, I think this is a really great way to do it. So the CI is actually checking for 0 0.29 and 0 0.30, which is uh, important to note because there are so many changes with 0 0.30. Not everyone's updated to it. So it's actually going to check both of those versions, which I think is really nice. Yeah, it's really nice to see, especially that there were so little changes to be made here. Like only SPL pod needed to mm -hmm. update it. So really good that we have these checks. Yeah, and then we have um, a new um, syscall, like syswars are changing a little bit. So as you know, there's like syswars, which you can, for example, use in your transaction to check other instructions in a transaction, for example. If you want to make sure that there's no other instruction in your transaction than the one that you added, for example, you can use a syswar. And now they're improving on this. So it will be way easier, for example, to read like big amounts of data from other accounts like for example, I hit the, like the staking uh, stake accounts here or something. So you will directly be able to like read some data from the buffer instead of loading the whole accounts, for example. And the whole interface will, I think, become easier, right? Yeah, I think so. And it's going to be so much easier that actually, eventually, all the sysfar syscalls, which sounds kind of silly to say, the sysfar <laughs> yes. syscalls are actually going to more than likely be deprecated at some point, since this becomes like a generic syscall to access sysfar data. Yeah, definitely very interesting. Good that it's becoming better. Yeah, and this was all from SIMD127, uh, if you want to read it and check out some of the details mm -hmm. for, for the more context. much more context. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, with uh, just like Hannah here says. And then uh, some of the other commits actually are two feature gates related to a specific SIMD. So there's uh, the core BPF process. The core BPF initiative is, is ever ongoing. And there's actually the first two of those programs that are were initially enshrined programs. They were in the protocol themselves. They're being converted to BPF. That's kind of the whole uh, uh, initiative there. But the first two of these programs officially have a feature gate to eventually go live on all the clusters. So starting with the config program, which we've talked about a couple of times here on the changelog recently, and then also the actual feature gate program, 
that will help facilitate all of these upgrades and everything. And then contributing to this is actually, all of this is from SIMD89, which is the process of, uh, as, as Joe says, programify feature gate. And <laughs> this, there's actually an amendment uh, that's been proposed to that uh, SIMD that's been accepted for a while now. And it's specifically to make it so upgrading the, the process to upgrade these core BPF programs. Initially, we can even look at the Git diff here. Initially, this was actually a multi-sig um, with specific key holders at different organizations. But the proposed change is actually to make it so the it's a um, feature gate within the feature gate program to actually upgrade the core BPF programs, which I personally think makes way more sense. Yeah, totally. I also think that's better. And maybe for people who don't know like why this is even happening, like they're rewriting all the core programs or most yeah. of them to BPF programs. And this is mainly so that FireDancer doesn't need to re-implement everything because they can just use the, the same compiled programs. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And now there's like, of course, now there needs to be a process how to do this. So that's why I'm now doing these changes. Like now there will always be a feature gate and to upgrade these and probably the validators also vote on it if I understood it correctly. So yep. yeah, the process is more maturing now. Yeah, absolutely. And speaking of things that FireDancer won't have to implement, rent collection. <laughs> yeah. So uh, SIMD84 was officially approved and merged into the SIMD repo. And SIMD84, for those of you who don't know, is to actually disable rent collection. So rent collection has been uh, effectively deprecated, kind of, within the runtime itself for quite a while. Every single account has required to be rent exempt, putting two years worth, depositing two years worth of rent into an account when you create it. That's been a requirement for a while now. And as of six, eight, 10 months ago, something like that, every single account that exists on chain is rent exempt, which means the rent collection, the periodic rent collection code never gets used. So finally, this SIMD has been approved. And what this is gonna allow the core uh, protocol engineers to do is basically to remove all of that section of the code, do a big refactor, simplify the code base a lot, and most importantly, I think, make it so the Fire Dancer team doesn't even have to write that code to begin with, speeding up the Fire yeah. Dancer process, the Fire Dancer development. Yeah, that's super nice. The program will probably still be there, like how I read it here, because some people are using the code, so the name may also stick around. But actually, now it's like more like a minimum balance than a rent. Yeah. So yeah, ho maybe start hopefully, using this. Hopefully, term. we'll start renaming rent to something more, um, more informative. I'll say. <laughs> All right, let's uh, let's dive into resources for the week. Were there any, any cool resources that you saw this week? Yes. So there's a new uh, open source program from um, Aki Blockchain, which is an open source oh, fuzzer. Yeah. And if you don't know what a fuzzer is, like a fuzzer is basically something where you, that you can use to test your programs. And what it does, it just uh, throws a bunch of random stuff at your program, basically, just all kinds of random bytes and so on, and sees if there's uh, problems, if you get overflows or any data problems. And this is open source, so you can just try it out. And I think this is uh, super exciting to help with um, all kind of security stuff. Probably always good to just run this, just try it out in addition to audits, of course. Yeah, yeah in addition to. And then did you see this uh, this issue that was opened by Wilfred from Triton? Um, about yeah, I, I saw actually. Connections with WebSockets? Uh, yeah, I saw Brian uh, do a tweet about it. And yeah, but what is it about? Yeah, so basically, this is, even says it right here, this has been an issue for about two years. Um, it's been like, basically, you would run out of connections when you would try to uh, do WebSocket connections. And because of how Node.js and some of the JavaScript runtimes, so this is all within Web3.js, how some of those runtimes would handle connections, turns out uh, they would basically go to a really high connection count when you really only need one. So Wilfred's basically proposed of setting the default connection size, the pool size, to just one, and then just solve so many problems, apparently, which I think is just an amazingly simple thing that took everyone about two years to like figure out. Yeah. Where has this line been in the last two years? Yeah, yeah. yeah I heard this pro uh, complaints a lot in the beginning, and I couldn't really... Uh, know why, because in Unity, the implementation is different, so there it was always uh, working. <laughs> Um, yeah, yeah, this is like a specific with the JavaScript runtimes and, and Node.js specifically goes to like max connections, which is, uh, you know, interesting. <laughs> yeah, it's nice. It's super nice to figure out now like why the where this problem came from because it was hard to reproduce mm -hmm. as well. As you see, it was only happening when the connection limit was reached, right? 
Yeah. So that's super nice. Yeah. And then this other resource that I saw, someone uh, created basically an open source CLI wallet, which is like incredibly cool. It's it's under it's the GPL3 so license. And the the docs guide here, the readme in this repo is actually like pretty detailed of like how to set it up, which is amazing. Yeah, and beautiful. there's a couple of uh, like animated pictures, some some GIFs in here that like show it actually being used. And it's basically like a full CLI wallet. The, you, you can see a QR even code QR here. Codes. Yeah, it's so cool. This <laughs> yeah. thing is this thing is really cool. And you know, if people want more wallets, this one's open source. You know, if you're if you're a hardcore dev and you want to run a CLI wallet or tinker around, like give it a give it a look, take it a look at it. Actually, it always helps. Like even with like development, like just look mm -hmm. at your wallet that is saved somewhere in your local file and see what's actually going on in there. So I think this is super yeah. helpful. Oh, that's a good point. This would be a great like addition to the the local dev setup of like yeah. having a better. I wonder how many tokens to I have in there. <laughs> Ooh, yeah. there's a lot. All the tokens dev net especially. <laughs> created. Yeah. And then do you want to give the Stack Exchange shout outs for this week, Jonas? Yeah. So everyone is uh, active on Stack Exchange. Really nice to see. We have Jimmy here. We have Sid Abis uh, Akhtar. And um, Christian is there. Callum, of course. Um, so yeah, it's. Um, Super good. Like uh, I heard from many people that they, they're actually getting their answers faster now and better answers. So it's all great. Yeah, absolutely. Collect I saw points. someone said that they, uh, yeah, collect the points, get your reputation up, boost up yeah, the stack exchange. Thing. There was there was some questions that got it, two valid answers within about five minutes or so of it being initially posted, which is is incredible. That's how it should be. Yeah. Yeah, it is. Well, that about wraps it up for this week's change log. It's a little bit on the longer side, but uh, jam-packed with information and tons of personality. We'll catch you in the next one. <laughs> See you next week. Bye-bye.